Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of BIM Pure Live. I am your host, Nicolas Gatelier. I am an architect, a BIM specialist, and the founder of Revit Pure and BIM Pure. We have a great show waiting for you today. Uh, before moving on uh, with our guest, saying, saying hello to people in the chat. We've got Agostina, we got Danny from Boston. We've got RJ from Northern Idaho. We've got Mustafiz from Brampton, Ontario. Hello to everybody. Um, and I will say, give a shout out to our sponsors. Uh, thanks, Enscape, for sponsoring this season of BIM Pure Live. And for this sponsorship, I've decided that since most of you are familiar with Enscape, which is a great uh, visualization tool that is compatible uh, with Revit, but also with ARCHICAD uh, and SketchUp and Rhino, I decided to create a tip series of things that I really like about Enscape. So let's roll the video. So the feature that I wanted to demonstrate today is uh, the ability to create standalone model online. So in this case, I'm using uh, the new sample model from Revit. I'm loading Enscape. So you can see it. this is the Snowden Towers project that is available with Revit 2024. I move around the project a little bit. And if I want to share this with a client that doesn't have Enscape, something cool that you can do is at the top left, you can use this EXE icon and create a web standalone. So I'm clicking on this. I have to wait until it's exported. Then I go to Upload Management in Revit. You're logged into your account. You can see your active projects. I go to Web Standalone, and this is a URL link. I open this link in a browser. It might take a minute or so to load, depending on the size of the model. And then this is uh, a fully a standalone model with a URL link that you can send to anybody and you can actually walk around. This doesn't use WASD. You have to use the keyboard keys to walk around the model. You might notice it's slightly um, slower than using actually using Enscape, uh, but still, it's still really useful to walk around and share this with a client. And if you think this is maybe a little too slow or not enough good quality, you can also export a panorama. So in this case, I've exported a panoramic view and I click on this button in the upload management to upload the panorama view to uh, the cloud. And then I have a link that I can share with anybody. I'll open this in browser. You can see that the view quality is actually a bit better than using a standalone, but this is still pretty amazing. Um, yeah, so really easy to share. That's, and as you've seen, uh, this is super simple to use. That's what I've liked from Inkscape from the start, uh, the simplicity and how quick you can do things like that. And as you've seen, I've just used the Snowden Towers model as is without modifying it. And before moving on with the guest, something else at RevitPure.com, we offer courses in content such as the Pro Template for Revit. We currently have a promotion that's ending very soon. Go to revitpure.com slash fall2023 to download the three courses and the pro template bundle at a big discount, the managed course to help you create and manage Revit standards, including automation and creating a great project um, Revit template. Basics to get started in design if you want to use Revit for presentation purpose. And finally, with the pro template that I use with all my clients as a starting point when they need a new template. So the bundle includes all of this. The template, the bundle is actually everything Revit Pure has ever released as courses. So that's at revitpure.com slash uh, fall 2023. All right, and today's guest is Altaf Genihar. Altaf is originally from India, but now living in New York City in the USA. He's the founder and CEO of SnapTrude since 2017, which is a collaborative automated 3D building design tool on the web, and I'm bringing you Altaf. How are you, Altaf? Thank you so much, Nick Nicholas. Really glad to be here. Doing doing pretty good. How are How are you doing? I'm doing great. Really happy to to see you in here. All right. So uh, we're going to show and demonstrate uh, some of SnapTrude. But my first question is, uh, what did motivate you to start SnapTrude? Can you tell me the, the beginning of the story? How you got inspired to start this? 
yeah so it's it's a very um interesting story in the say it was like almost coincidental of me landing into this industry i personally come from a research background like in computer graphics applied geometry and we were in this really large government project back in india where we were reconstructing a world heritage site a unesco world heritage site in southern part of india from ground up in 3d it's partially destroyed it was built in the 14th and the 15th century so it, we really had to recreate the geometry architecturally how it was back in the day through whatever data was was available a lot of photogrammetry was was created a lot of research was done on that and since it was a large scale project architects were involved as well during that project and i started looking at their workflows a lot more in depth of how they're approaching and one very clear observation was most of their uh, tool stack to say was very old in nature like almost to say archaic is what i felt uh, having seen other industries uh, and being on the cutting edge of research uh, and probably 80% of their work could is is redundant like it's grunt work uh, which ideally they shouldn't be doing is what my insight was and i said like let's start talking to more people and see um, and i was curious enough to start building something i started building a plugin to sketchup i still remember that it was automating like a very small workflow um, and when i started showing it around to people like they they started using it like they bought it uh, to my surprise and that gave me motivation that oh then there are like so many other people who might be suffering with similar uh, process issues let's start talking to them and as as i started talking to bigger and bigger architecture construction and other companies in the space in the aec industry they all came up with problems which were different um, like can you connect unreal engine to revit or oh, can i automate scheduling or oh, can i automate scheduling for this multi family um, apartment which i'm working on and i spent like the next 2 to 2 and a half years just doing this which is solving people's problems um otherwise my option was do a phd go deeper into academia like go into geometry graphics uh, and i was at crossroads whether to do the plugin development or this and i think i was i'm glad now that i chose this path uh, at that moment and in those two and a half years of working with these companies one clear insight which i came up with or actually two clear insights people love asking for plugins and using plugins or workflow solutions is because they're using a very old plumbing system and these are like band-aids to make sure that the plumbing system works mm -hmm. i have a, a question about this so you mentioned that your first plugin was with um a sketchup and so yes. when you're talking about this old plumbing are you referring to sketchup revit or all of these answers and other software as well i think it's not about one software i think it's mm -hmm. about the entire stack i would say <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh because they they were cutting edge back in the day Mm -hmm. uh in late 90s early 2000s whenever they were released but i think in the last two decades the world has changed um if you see internet has was almost non existent uh to an to an extent which it is today uh connectivity like the entire industry's knowledge sharing ability has vastly changed however the tools and the stack still remains the same i and i think that's the biggest gap which we we have we have started noticing if i open mm -hmm. my phone i can have 10 apps notion figma airtable all of them are so damn powerful but why can't i use similar things for my daily work in the ec industry and i think when people started noticing that they saw that the plumbing is old let's start fixing it through these gaps let's let's put bandaids and i think bandaids are not enough after a point Mm -hmm. you would need to rebuild the plumbing system yeah that's what it feels like that uh, current you know i'm i have um using revit a lot that's <laughs> my website is called uh, revit pure i'm interested in other solutions as well but yeah of course i'm noticing that improvements to um uh, revit are like fixing things that are weird in the first place and shouldn't be done that way and yeah i often think to myself huh that 
some of this should just be rebuilt from the ground up. But uh, with uh, last week's discussion with Martin Day, saying that Autodesk are not going to go uh, that route with with Revit, I'm really curious to see all the emerging tools such, such as uh, Snapdrude. Yeah. And something else that uh, Martin mentions are a few principles of the emerging uh, BIM modeling tools. One of them was the idea of being entirely cloud-based or web-based and also the possibility of eliminating files. So is that an approach that you are aiming for as well at Snapdrude? That was the fundamental thesis when we started. So mm -hmm. um, as I was saying, like the way our thesis was that let's change this plumbing system, we had a core thesis of what the new pl plumbing system should have. Like one was it has to be cloud first or web first because cloud has transformed every parallel industry that you can think of. Like started from sales CRM tools to developer operations to now we have um, design tools for the likes of Figma. And in AEC also, I think we have started seeing the last five years adoption of cloud, but it's still not to the extent which we hope uh, it should be with other industries being so much beneficial. So that was one approach which we always had. And one thing is like cloud first looks fairly simple, but like what it unlocks is unimaginable, like uh, accessibility from any device, accessibility from anyone doesn't matter where they're living in a remote island or in the office. Uh, collaboration, which is true Google Docs like collaboration, where you can literally mm -hmm. have multiple people editing or drafting the same document. Yeah. Um, which Multi I think multiplier, multiplayer. as I heard call. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, multiplayer for that matter. And I think all of these have been much needed in the industry. Uh, so I call AEC to be one of the most collaborative industries that struggles to collaborate. So they figure out hacks to collaborate with each other. Why not solve it fundamentally where you just enable them to collaborate better right from a junior architect to the principal designer, to an electrical consultant, to a GC, through the journey, looking at the information they want to look at and drafting or authoring that information into the project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, starting from the ground up. What we're seeing with uh, Autodesk right now, it seems like a, kind of a middle ground approach to still using of files from Revit, but it's a uh, part of it's on the cloud, but it's still files, you know, and it's still uh, a desktop app. So one of my question is, is Snapdrude entirely web-based? Does it mean, does it have kind of a downloadable client? And could it be something where you can work on the web or you can work with a client? Like for example, I think of Spotify where you can connect and use Spotify on the web, or you can also download uh, a Windows app. How do you see that? So if you look at it architecturally, Snapdrug today is purely web-based or mm -hmm. cloud-first approach. We might choose to have a thick client, but the approach will be very similar. Like Figma also today has an app which you will install, but there is an offline mode even on the browser or on that app. The only difference is uh, in the offline mode, you won't be able to collaborate because you're not connected to the internet. You won't be able to save it to the cloud because you're not connected to the internet. I think we will also go down that route, but today it is purely web-based. We are planning to probably do an offline mode uh, where you can still continue to work, be it on a browser, just that whenever it connects back to the internet, everything will sync back again into the cloud system. Uh, but for mm -hmm. the foreseeable future, I think we will be uh, a web-first platform. Mm -hmm. I see. Um... Yeah, I think if you if you want, we could have a look at uh, at Snapdrug. So I will. You're currently sharing your screen. I will show that to the audience, so we we can see your screen. We can see your camera as well on the top, uh, the bottom right of the screen. So you can see this is uh, what is this model? This is from Zaha. Yeah, this is the Zaha building in New York City, which is on the High Line. Uh, so this is something which we picked up way back in. I think mid last year that we wanted to design it in Snapdrug or model it in Snapdrug. I think it's it's model, it's not design. And um, we just took it as a way that are we able to do this? And I think we've been able to create a BIM model out of this, but this is more like a finished version of the model. I can probably uh, start from the beginning. And by the way, whatever I'm gonna show is still gonna be the version which is live 
in in the in the product today we are coming up with a new version version 2 which we previewed at next build very recently and it's expected to come out in late october early november i can probably give a preview of that as well so i'm on a browser i'm just using a new browser which which i've happened to um started liking uh so you can start a project with a template i started with a template over here and the program is available so i can start sketching out a program like how you would want to it it comes with all the snaps you can start splitting things like i want to maybe have the space split up like this do some parametric edits or things this maybe like move it like a junction things like that and each one of the space is individually editable so you can move them around or you can move it parametrically and i can start labeling them said so this is a workspace let's say this is a court it becomes a court so you want it to be a plaza it becomes a plaza let's call it as reception and you can start seeing the properties on the right side whenever you want it for that matter and whatever you do is happening both in 2d as well as in 3d so and there's a the famous push pull which is stable state when you expect it and i i have a question so i remember one of the the pitch sale uh, pitch sentence was the the ease of sketch up with the power of revit or s maybe i'm paraphrasing something along those that's lines that's the perfect Are, yeah that's what it, we say yeah that's that's still what you say so that's what i see it's very sketch up like like the idea of uh, push and pull which you don't you don't really have in in, in revit right because you would have Correct. create model in place and then it's you create an extrusion and you have to select the plane much more tedious uh but now you using the push and pull from from sketchup so can you explain the, this idea of the combining the power the qualities of both these tools yeah that was another core thesis back in um late 2017 which we were building cloud first collaborative and the third was we happened to realize that people do documentation in revit and revit also we validated it was meant to be a documentation tool not supposed to be a design tool and people still i think stick to using the likes of rhino likes of sketchup likes of autocad as well in combination with these tools to do design work and the core reason is people love the user experience of free form modeling without having limitations the moment you go into the bim world with revit you start having constraints and warnings and uh, limitations which you don't want to have at early stages of the design how do you then combine these like salt water and fresh pure water they don't combine <laughs> but we said can we combine this user experience that would be the holy yeah. grail yeah, of design is. authoring can we have something which is easier than sketchup which people love it like clay modeling people know how this works because they think that way architects think that way but we do the hard work of generating the bim model the yeah. parameter parametric details without pushing the effort on the user side and i think we have done a reasonable job and that's why people who were user snapped root loves about it you can still do spatial modeling program modeling as i'm doing and whenever you need it like i can just literally click a button and it becomes a bib model like this um i can change this per property so I, if i go back so, so you have to switch you say okay let, let's go from basically sketchup mode to revit mode basically <laughs> yes yes yeah. but the functionality would work in in both the scenarios for that matter. i see yeah so i'll go back i will probably change my external glass facade the facade to be glass curtain wall i can choose the parameters of the glass curtain wall etc as well and now if i generate now we have a different building which is generated from the same sketch which i happen to do and it has all your details like if i select the slab you literally have the slab assembly all the parameters and i can add materials to it like if i want to choose a different material which finish i'm choosing i can like literally go through an entire material library attach materials to it so it has all of those depth and capabilities which you would typically expect from a bim model and the automation is so powerful that even the wall junctions like if you want a metered junction if you want a a cut junction this is how construction uh, at construction stage the walls would be placed so that's how we have done it but you have all the parametric controls to be able to do it then you can use your door families um and the interesting bit which we did is 
we always knew that revit has become the gold standard of operations everybody is on it in some form for meaningful projects so we interoperate very well with revit so you can literally use the same door families which you have in revit in snaptook you can use the same windows you can use the same furniture um so i have a workstation which i have uploaded yeah that was one of my other questions so uh, revit uses uh, families sketchup it's like com components so it's snaptrude how does it work can you still create like custom components how do you work with that so right now we allow ability to create templates which are kind of very similar to components which you can reuse between projects but for library per se we always um import it from existing tools because you already mm -hmm. have built your massive libraries in some form mm -hmm. that nobody is willing to recreate those we said like let's import let's that's why interoperability is going to be uh, one of the biggest uh, enablers for people to transition out of those legacy tools mm -hmm. so right now a snap is still very much made to, to work uh side by side with existing tools such as revit and sketchup and uh, other tools right Yes, it is more transitionary. Like if you say, if you have done a project up to 20% in Rhino, uh, mm -hmm. we will give you the ability to bring the Rhino file into Snaproot and go further with it. Mm -hmm. If you have done a project in Revit seven years ago and you have a Revit file and you want to renovate it, you should be able to import that Revit file and do your renovation design proposal on Snaproot. But with the same families, with the same data, but in a much easier user experience like you're seeing over here and go to Revit when you want to. Yeah, so so I guess this is not using IFC files. How do the files, uh, the file formats communicate together? We don't use IFC, you're right. However, for uh, each one of the experiences, we have built the interoperability. Uh, the Rhino one is something which we have not yet launched, but we will launch uh, probably, I think, in mid to late November. Uh, mm -hmm. With Revit, we have it. We have done it through a plugin. Um, so basically, if you see it here, so there's a, we call it a Snaproot Manager. You install it in Revit and you can do both. I don't have Revit on this machine because I'm using Mac, uh, but you can literally just like say, send to Snaproot in Revit and it will send the model to Snaproot. You can say like, bring it from Snaproot to Revit. It will bring it back into Revit. And you have all your data, like the wall families will be proper wall families with the layers, all the parameter parameter information about like this door has like two meter wide or two meter in height, all of those details will be there. Yeah, because it's like sometimes in Revit when you use IFC files or other format, in theory you have interoperability, but in practice it doesn't work that well and some important elements you can act, cannot do much with them, maybe get some properties, but you cannot uh, move them and so on. Uh, I think that's yeah. that's a bigger problem with the industry, which is yeah. I think bigger companies have promised a lot and never delivered uh, when it comes to the finer details because the devil is in the, always in the details. That's something which like we are going into a lot of details and we only commit what whatever we can translate and we tell if there are any limitations very closely mm -hmm. with the users and happy to work with them. Mm -hmm. uh, good. We have a comment from WZ that says. In Revit, you can just use mass modeling or form it. So how would you say uh, Snaproot is different from mass modeling in Revit or uh, form it or SketchUp? Um, if you do mass modeling in Revit, I think it's still way more complicated. It's just not crisp and fast. And that's what everybody complains about Revit. And I think you will, if you see the adaption level of mass modeling in Revit, it's very, very low. I think it's like even single digit percentage. Format, I think, was a very good promise uh, to to be able to replace it, but I think it has fallen short. Again, I think because of the user experience. But again, like Format only does massing; it doesn't even get into any form of BIM. And that's where Snaproot is that perfect hybrid, which is giving you that mass modeling capability, but goes enough into BIM, not maybe a design detail level, but to an extent schematic level details. And with the new release which is coming out, I'll probably uh, play the play the video in in a few minutes. You can start seeing that we can go into a very detailed schematic stage of the design, which mm -hmm. only today Revit can do. Uh, I remember when we first met last year at the uh, AUU conference, 
yeah. which um, and you showcase a snapshot to me. I remember you said that uh, documentation was still not there. Is it something uh, that is still on uh, your roadmap? It is definitely on the roadmap. Mm -hmm. um, I cannot tell the exact timelines, but I think early next year, you'll start seeing some previews of how the documentation workflows would look like in mm -hmm. coordination with Snaproot. However, today we still feel Revit is going to be around for a reasonable yeah. Yeah. amount. I think it's perfectly fine to work very closely with them because that is the industry standard tool mm -hmm. uh, for documentation purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And we export very happily um, in, in as much detail as possible to Revit for that matter. Uh, all right. Good to know. So it's a, a it's a partner tool to uh, to Revit at the moment. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah, there are some questions uh, from Suradeep that ask: Can we use Kobe in the Snaptrude? Not at the moment. However, we have partnered with uh, Cove Tool for that matter for doing Cove sustainability okay. analysis. Yeah. So you can actually do some early sustainability studies. One thing is like we also have the ability to bring in map and the neighborhood buildings, like this is New York, which you can see for this building. And with this, you can start doing, sorry, we can start doing some analysis. Like this is the sun part diagram for this region, for that matter. And you can even do some shadow simulation if uh, you want it. However, if you want to go into a little bit more detail, you can actually use the Cove tool uh, integration and choose the different parameters of the project. The lat long is already picked up. And you'll have the results around like what does the SD analysis, AC analysis of this project would look like. And you can have multiple design options to compare them against. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, we have some more question. One from Yannick that asks, can you use it for smaller residential project? For example, small salt box shape house with the dormer on the front. So I guess on a larger context, who, what kind of projects is Snaptrude the best for at the moment? Do, would you say any projects or do you aim for a specific kind of project? I would say we are trying to be as horizontal as possible to support any type of project. Uh, but today uh, we can do reasonable, like the 95% of the projects which people try to accomplish would be able to be done on Snaptrude on the early stages. But our strengths of going deeper have been a lot more on corporate interiors, commercial interior, even including like retail for that matter, because we have customers like WeWork who are on the platform and a bunch of other customers who are in the corporate interiors and commercial interior domain. Uh, that's where we are very deep, but you can definitely do things which um, which which the questionnaire, uh, with the question asked, like if you want to do like a small single family home with, with enough amount of details, of course you can do that. Uh, if you want to do something which is like the Zaha level project, uh, you can you can definitely get up to that stage as well. If you want to do something which is like slightly more simpler, like this building, which is again in New York, 799 Broadway. This is one of the first projects modeled on Snaproot. We can even do that with all the detailed interiors. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the project by, by Zaha, I see all these curves. You have like native complex curve modeling tools in Snaproot. Yes, we with this V2 version, which is coming out, you'll start seeing the finesse of the curve, uh, which we'll have, like the different types of snaps, tangential snap, like the junctions when you're doing those, which are all the pain points which you find when you're working with even Revit. We have tried to attempt to resolve a lot of those. Um, definitely the user experience is going to be a lot more better than whatever is available in the market uh, to do early stage curvilinear designing um, in, in, that, in that hemisphere. Uh, good to know. We have some more questions uh, from Franco. The, does Snaptrude have design options or another similar tool to test design solutions? Yes. So basically today you can create multiple versions of the same project uh, within a, a single project, I would say. like You can have different design options within a single project and you can compare them according to some of the metrics. And we have also... Uh, launch the ability to pick pieces from each, like say, if I was doing this R building and I had like seven options and I say like, I did the facade of this side in three different ways. And I want to 
mix and match those you should you will be able to do that like you can like just copy paste this version into this version and then run some analysis on it you'll be able to do that as well uh good thanks uh, another question from uh, tino that asks how about connecting to live renderings like enscape or twin motion that is something which we have in our roadmap we still don't do live link to them however you can export out a reasonably high quality fbx file out of the out of the model through which you can go to twin motion for sure as well as lumion um with enscape if you have it integrated with revit uh, we definitely support that because we export a revit file out of this uh, however we have a very lightweight it's it's a visualizer it's not a renderer on the on the browser itself which is like which takes about like 30 seconds to generate out of the project like this was for um this project which which we have over here it's like a commercial interior project and this is the visualization version i would not say it's still rendered to that quality but the ability that it can provide you to take quick feedback before you generate like a high quality render is the the user can actually just like start dropping in comments like say that tag people within the team say alta can we change this workstation so your draft work is happening way faster like your senior architect is reviewing it literally on an ipad like on a train journey saying like can we change this can we change this do some redlining uh, do some annotations on it and you can go back and fix it and regenerate the render if you want to that can also happen with maybe a prospective custom and it happens with data like what does the furniture schedule look like what does the what does the wall quantities different types of paints being used so it's basically like data is one of the collaborators that's how we treat it there's a question from suradeep that asks what are the files that we can export from snaptrude we support quite a lot as i said like i keep talking about revit a lot but apart from revit you have uh, 3ds we also support dwgs directly coming out of snaptrude as well um and we have glb rvt ifc as well but like i wouldn't really say that it's of as high quality as what revit uh, export from snaptrude is but we do support it at least on a basic version and then fbx etc these are some of the file formats that you can export out today uh good uh, another question from uh, laboto talking about collaboration how can you connect with a structural or mep model does snaptrude identify structural elements it does identify structural elements like you can literally have like this is a column um, and you can see that it's a wooden column if i go into this project for that matter and just um, let's select this and this is a concrete column with has plaster and paint so it identifies columns load bearing walls beams all of those level of details as well um and you can design them as well however on the other disciplines which is mechanical electrical plumbing that's something which we don't support right now for designing however you can import them so say if you have a revit model and you want to bring all of those things you can import a full fully detailed revit model into into snaptrude and it has all your elements you can see like this is a duct um this is a cable tray fitting so you can identify all of those information but you just can't edit these however the rest of the things you can still edit and move around like this is the furniture i want to replace this workstation with something else i can i can pick anything and replace it the idea is tomorrow you will be able to start replacing your elbows your um your your fittings as well uh, when we have full mep capability but with architectural element as i'm as i'm showing over here right now you can like change a lot of things like if i want to add a door to an actual revit file i can add it change the parameters and export it back to revit which you can't do in bin 360 or any other collaboration tool at the moment uh from wz does that keep a history of the requested changes uh maybe it was it referring does. to previous collaboration uh feature yeah to a large extent you can start seeing like we don't just maintain a change log that this was added this was subtracted we also show you the impact on data like you can actually pick i want to measure cost 
for all the changes which have been done. So you're not just can you see that I added a door, replaced three workstations. I can also see that it costs, it's taken the cost up by $20,000 or $10,000. Um, and you can even maintain a track of it through exporting what we call as a change log. So you can export it as a as a spreadsheet, which you can which you can refer to. Uh, the same is true with even your bill of quantities and and other like you you can see literally who changed what at what time. The entire log is available. Uh, yeah. The, another question for me is versioning. I've heard some comments from people uh, wondering about these web based tools. Like say in Revit, when you're ready, you can synchronize. But if before synchronizing, you're like, oh, wait a minute, actually, maybe that what I did was a mistake, so I will not synchronize, I will just cancel. So how do you deal with this in a web-based tool such as Snapshot? Can you revert back to a version and can keep a history yes. or backups of uh, or older options? So that is the advantage with having design options. So you can, it's literally like using um, <laughs> like a Git kind of a strategy, which is like you start with a project and you can have multiple design options created out of it, which are branching out and say you made a mistake. So you want to probably fix it with a different design option that you have created. So you can copy paste that stuff, delete this stuff, or say you liked something in another design option, which you want to bring and you like something else from this other design option. You should be able to do all of these things in the, in that tree that that's how we have solved it. Like you can start with a structure and have multiple options. Uh, can people currently try Snapshot for free? I, th I think uh, yesterday yes. I did create an account and, and mess around with it a little bit. So is it entirely free right now? Or how does that work? And how do you plan to work for uh, pricing in the future? It's not entirely free, but if anybody can go to our website and get started. So we allow three free projects on the platform, which you can dabble around with, but it's free for students. So anybody who's a student, mm -hmm. which has a valid domain name with the university, can have access to it uh, for as much as long as they want. However, they will not get all the features which are like at the enterprise level, which is like content management, creating teams, permissioning, which like bigger companies need. But anything where you want to do modeling, designing, you you can do actually all of those things on the platform. Mm -hmm. And what about like for project managers who might not, because in Revit, it's not silly that it's a problem, but it's it has a certain layer of complexity you have uh, modelers might have project manager who doesn't modify the model who might want to comment so they're using this whole like other markup feature that still requires an access to the bm360 and other desktops it's free so for so. it's free for anybody who is not editing the model right now okay so you can yeah, literally yeah. send it to a customer and the customer can without even even having an account so you can actually maintain all the permissioning like if i share it so this is shared with an entire team over here as well as like this individual. But if I do it, anyone with the link, then you can literally send it to anyone who might not even have to sign up to snap. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's interesting. That always, that's always kind of a problem with some clients where you're trying to share some information, but now they have to have this subscription to this docs or whatever it's called service uh, from other desk. Uh, okay. Interesting. And we another have, bit which yeah. I will show on collaboration since we were on it, yep. it's not just this comment kind of collaboration, it's actually real-time collaboration, which you will see in Google Docs. As you can see, literally I'm pretending to be two users mm -hmm. and you can see like cursor level movement of what this mm -hmm. other person is trying to do. I will probably set the zoom levels correctly and I can pretend to be this user. I can pretend to be this user, make changes. And it's literally real time, the sync. This is the multiplayer collaboration. Yeah, exactly. So as is Google Docs or uh, Figma, as you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, interesting. So, um, so you've mentioned right now you're kind of walking side by side uh, with Revit. So, what are the ambitions of Snapshot on the future? Would you aim to be an a one and one all platform for the entire project from start to finish. Is that what you aim, you want a snap to accomplish in a few years? I, I would say we will aim to be a very comprehensive platform to serve the industry, to do as much as they can. 
uh but i think having expectation that only one tool or mm-hmm. one yes. player would do everything is also um i think that's that's definitely not the way it works in any, every other industry there will be yeah. a mm-hmm. lot more deeper tools in each one of those vertical but we definitely want to be the one where you will be able to integrate everything and mm-hmm. be the place where um your work happens mm-hmm. uh so on the sustainability bit we were really glad that we could integrate with cove tool uh maybe on embodied carbon tomorrow there is a really great tool that we can incorporate or integrate we would be happy to do that there is something great on structural analysis we would be happy to integrate with that uh but doing everything is is, is something which i don't think we would want to mm-hmm. uh, go down that path and like be disappointing in each one of those verticals yeah so, so what do you think about the idea of uh, open bim is that something that you're uh, supporting the idea of maybe instead of having a closed ecosystem the idea of having a um, solution that integrates better with a variety of, of company and file formats that that's a core thesis like that's why interoperability is so important to us uh it literally even our file structure it's actually less of files like <laughs> database structure which we call is also we are actually contemplating if we should make it public and let people understand it better right now it's internally we used to translate information out of revit and other file formats and you'll start seeing a lot more interoperability integrations with snaptrude in in the rest of the year like as i said like rhino is one such which we will be announcing but there will be so many others which i cannot name right now but you'll start seeing by end of the year to early next year and open bim is i think like if you associate it with an association i'm not sure about the detail but like having an open bim environment where you can translate data in and out of the tool with um with the source of truth just not lying in one place definitely we are uh we are very supportive of that idea and we would definitely want to contribute as much as we can to do that mhm i'm wondering who are currently using snaptrue who are What kind of clients do you have? Is it more for interior design? Is it more for complex facades? What are you seeing the majority of your clients? Uh we have a certain pattern. Definitely commercial interior as I said is is one of the uh, really nice use case that people are going deeper with uh, because it does a lot of automations to be able to enable them uh, to be productive. Also we have early stage designing happening on Snaptrude which is the early st- stage let's this is my site what do i build over here creating the early concept modifying that concept and coming up with the first bim version uh, of that model and then going into revit that's something which we have seen a lot of our users do and we have started seeing even like smaller buildings like the residential one which i show a lot of people are going deeper into those workflows as well uh, of seeing can they do as much as they as their work right inside snaptrude um, and reducing if not removing lip, the the other tools that they're using uh in their stack. Mhm. Uh you mentioned that you're uh, uh in San Francisco discussing with uh other funders especially about discussing talking about AI. So I'm curious what are your thoughts about AI in AC and in BIM and how do you think it's going to influence uh our industry and also how Snaptrue is going to um use the ai in its tools yeah that's that's a very like i'm very um optimistic about ai so uh, as as i i told you i'm in sf like i'm meeting uh, a bunch of founders here and like happen to even um have a good conversation with sam altman uh who who runs open ai yesterday yeah, open AI, yeah. and i think ai is one of those enablers like how cloud or internet was back in the day uh which has become today very ubiquitous with everyone and i think ai might become something like that in the next 5 years 10 years maybe sooner uh and how do you leverage it there are things which are going to be table stakes which i think we have started seeing examples of um which are easier to implement the the impact is huge like veras is one such example uh which is like a really good implementation and i will see a lot more of those things another thing is text to creating a model or model changes mm-hmm. which is also very simpler to implement um in existing tools which you'll start seeing as well 
But yeah, I, think- I, I will just I just want to give a shout out to uh, Veras, which we had uh, a few weeks ago on the show, and also Hypar, which are doing text to bim which also had a few months ago on, on the show. So you can uh, check out episodes that I did with Hypar and with the um, Evolve Lab with the guy from Veras. So sorry to interrupt. I'll let you keep going with. Uh, yeah, uh, about this I think these these are things which I think most of the tools will begin to have uh, going forward uh, because those are the low hanging fruits, so to say. I think the deeper applications would be um, we are using very generic la- language models or, or or image generation models and applying it to AEC as is. But when you go deeper into the existing industry workflows and then create specific tools or models for the industry, I think it will be a lot more deeper impact. Uh, like you can literally have like AI over the shoulders, like that example, which has always been talked about, uh, not trying to do the design on behalf of the user, but being the co-pilot with that person. Um, maybe say, if you're doing this building over here, maybe increasing this outside, uh, to by 15 feet would make it more efficient in your energy utilization. Uh, we might not know this answer. What if AI can understand that having this 15 feet out uh, is a better way to design? And I think those kind of workflows, those kind of information, which can actually come from the firm's knowledge uh, of years and years of projects that they have done would be transformational. And you'll start seeing that we will be leveraging it a lot in the next few months to, I think, probably a year. Uh, the table stake things will definitely be there, uh, but a lot more of these deeper integrations and deeper workflow solutions using AI uh, will will be will be coming to Snap Tool. It, it will be coming to Snap Tool. All right, e- excited for it. It seems that in just like a year and a half, the progress that we had is has been completely insane. I remember the first images that we had from was it Dolly Mini that w- it was kind of funny right almost like memes images and a few months later Mid Journey comes in with new version with totally mind blowing what it can produce and then chat GPT's release that was like less than a year ago and wow so just yeah. in that short amount of time all the changes that we had it feels like we're at the beginning of a revolution so how will it affect uh, the job of the architect to me that's still an open question I know that with uh, Martin last week, we've uh, mentioned that some, especially with more rectangular uh, standard buildings, I would say, like the automate documentation parts uh, can be fully admitted, like a full set of drawings can be uh, made where then, of course, the architect has to verify, make sure everything is compliant. But and then for more complex signature buildings, maybe it's a bit more complicated to automate all the documentation. Uh, but still, these are possibilities uh, of AI in the future. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'm just looking at the questions uh, from Mustafiz. How sta- Snapshot could be used in designing landscapes, roads, curbs, basements, spot elevation, contour line modification easily. So, what about the side tools that you that you have? Do you have specific are... uh, side tool or just kind of a solid geometry? Right now, it is solid geometry for that matter. It's I would say the tool set for doing landscape is not comprehensive today, uh, mm-hmm. but we are having a couple of releases after the V2 release, which we'll do. Then we start, you'll start be able to do like edit your contour lines and be able to draw roads and a lot more of the landscaping things which you would want to do. But even today, you can do some basic stuff. Like if you want to import a CAD file, which is a surveyor diagram, you can import it in. If you want to bring in topography from the one which I showed you, the the city data, all of those things are possible. But the tool sets to be able to create complex one of those, I think very soon you will be able to do those. Uh, all right. I think we missed one question earlier from Suradeep. Can we filter the change log, like search kind, searching for a specific element and want to check uh, what has changed in that item? So I guess if you can export it in like an Excel format, you could search, Absolutely. filter, bring it to Excel yeah. to do some of that work, right? Yeah. Uh, all good. So you said earlier that you, you wanted to show some sort of a video teaser of the next release. Do you want to do that? Absolutely. Let me just pull it up once.
Yeah, we cannot hear the sound, but that's okay. We can see it. So since we cannot hear the sound, can you explain some of these new new features? Yeah, so basically you will be able to start adding more BIM capabilities as you're able to see. Designing buildings uh, and massing in a combination would be a lot more intuitive. Um, like you will be able to do organic geometry, as I said, like curves, etc. You'll be able to do it very, very easily with all the snaps, uh, which will make it comfortable. And of course, like create building capability, which I just sh showed you, will become a lot more powerful, like adding curtain wall details, changing the parameters very intuitively. And uh, of course, it's automated, like even other parametric objects like staircases, railings, all of those things will start seeing. Um, as I told you, like commercial interior is something where we have got a lot of users. You'll see a lot more capabilities uh, to adjust the designs uh, very, very quickly with replace, copy, um, and align kind of capabilities. And you'll start seeing like things like stacked walls, complex curtain walls, uh, very intuitively designed, modified in the platform. Um, dimensioning would be a lot more simpler so that you can start creating initial plans, section view capabilities. So it's becoming way more horizontal and way more detailed, as you can see, it's, it's getting to a very decent schematic stage uh, going forward. And so, this is coming out in like end of next month to November okay. 1st week. Okay, all right, I see. Uh, but people can go to SnapTrude and, and try it uh, right away, right? Absolutely. Uh, the V2 version, not yet. The mm -hmm. V2 version will be out in, uh, as I said, end of October, but they can try out the existing version of the product. Okay, and something interesting, so uh, last year we met in uh, the hotel lobby because you were kicked out of <laughs> Autodesk University. And uh, this year you actually have a booth at AU. So can you talk about that? So can people attending AU can meet you or meet your team over there? Absolutely. We'll have a very big presence at Autodesk University this year. Uh, I think about like seven people from our team will be, uh, will be there uh, in Vegas. We will also have a booth. So please feel free to come visit us, explore the tool. And I think we'll also have uh, a lot more challenges within our booth about using the product, comparing it with existing tools. Uh, so you can come and explore and like win a few things. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, well, we actually had lots of uh, very pointed technical questions today. So I appreciate it. Thanks to everyone in the chat. So I will announce a couple of things and we can close the episode. Uh, first, uh, next week episode with Clive Jordan, who is the founder, co-founder and CEO of Plannerly. And Plannerly is a tool to help you uh, use and master and manage BIM standards, including BIM execution, execution plans and being compliant with ISO 19650. So I have so many questions uh, for Clive trying to understand ISO 19650 at like all the BIM standards, it seems like there's so much to learn, to master and to apply. And I admit I'll sometimes struggle with some of it because there's there are so many norms and things to know. So Clive will help us out with that. And we also demonstrate plannerly and how it can be used to solve these issues. So that's next week on Wednesday, same time, 3 p.m. Eastern time with Clive Jordan from Plannerly. And just a minute over here. And thanks again to Enscape for sponsoring this episode of BIM Pure Live. Enscape is a visualization rendering tool that I love using with Revit. And again, our fall promotion to get the three courses in the pro template bundle for Revit at revitpure.com slash fall 2023 or there's a link in the video description um uh, back to you altaf uh anything else that you wanted to say or to, to conclude before uh, we close the show yeah absolutely i think the the glad thing is that the ac industry 
especially on the software side a lot of things are happening on the tech side and it's a super interesting time for every one of the people in the industry to like take notice of newer tools like us try us out give us feedback so that we can build a better next generation of the plumbing system which i talk about mm -hmm. yeah that was the the message from same message as martin last week who said that you know if we're sometimes complaining a lot in the ec about the tools we have but if we want better tool we've got to give fit feedback to people trying to create new tools so i encourage everybody to try Snapshot, but other tools as well give feedback and share your opinion about it so that's the way that these tools are going to improve uh thank you so, so much yeah nice closing message so thanks to everybody in the chat and see you next week with uh clive jordan so bye everybody and see you thank you so much